Jalen Rose only just said Nikola Jokic has graduated to superstar status, when before this year, he'd won two consecutive MVPs. Kendrick Perkins said Jokic won those MVPs because he was white. Chandler Parsons said the Suns owner flopping should have given Jokic a suspension in fear of others playing the race card. YouTube tells me just 13% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe. Back to the content. On top of what you heard in the intro, out of 100 voters for MVP, Jokic received 15 first place votes, 50 second second place votes, and 32 third place votes, which adds up to 99 out of 100 total appearances. That one voter was Mike Breen's broadcasting partner, primetime ABC ESPN analyst Mark Jackson. Damn y'all. Every other voter had at least Jokic in their top three. Jackson would apologize for this on Twitter, saying, made an honest mistake with my MVP votes, my apologies to the Denver Nuggets and Nikola Jokic, he's not only a legitimate MVP candidate who deserved my vote, but he's truly one of the all-time greats, again, my apologies. The only thing that tweet left out from Jackson was the reason he didn't vote for Jokic, but I think we're all capable of connecting the dots. I mean, really, the apology's nice, but what we're missing from Jackson is the why. Maybe more than that, the how. How could someone not vote for a player who is number one in literally every advanced statistic and who set multiple all-time records? Jokic became the fastest to record 2,000 points, 1,000 boards, and 500 dimes in a season of all time, passing Wilt Chamberlain from 1966. Jokic led the NBA in on-slash off-court net rating and posted the highest player efficiency rating in league history. Mark Jackson went further in depth about his apology for not having Jokic on his ballot by saying, quote, One thing I live by, you make a mistake, you own it. Absolute mistake made by me and thinking, how did I make that mistake? You can tell I put one center, two forwards, and two guards, so I wasn't even thinking, end quote. While that isn't the most detailed of apologies, you have to respect Mark for giving one in the first place. Much of the disrespect Jokic has received over the years has been anything but apologetic. Such was the case with former NBA player Chandler Parsons, who, after Suns owner Matt Ishiba flopped his way to a Nikola Jokic fine, said, quote, Get ready for the race card. If he doesn't get suspended, because I don't think he's going to get suspended, and there's going to be a lot of things like, if this were Draymond, he would get suspended. If this were Dylan Brooks, anybody with a worse reputation or past is going to get suspended. You hate to see it, end quote. Weird part about the timing of that statement is, this came directly after the Suns owner himself, in Matt Ishbia, proclaiming he wouldn't want a suspension to happen, saying, quote, Great win for the Suns last night in an amazing series so far. That should be and is the only story. Suspending or fining anyone over last night's incident would not be right. I have a lot of respect for Jokic and don't want to see anything like that. Excited for Game 5, go Suns. End quote. The statement from Parsons, which was right after that proclamation from Ishbia, says exactly this in a nice way. I think Jokic should be suspended because he's white. If you read between the lines, that's precisely what Parsons said there. And it's that type of subtle yet deep-cutting racism that whatever race someone is, society can't or at least shouldn't deal with. Then there was when Jokic won MVP for the first time in 2021. Jokic began the campaign with four triple-doubles in his first six outings, and in one of those games, became the first center since Wilt Chamberlain in 1968 to record 18 assists. Joker also became the first center to record at least 50 points and 10 assists in a game since Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in 1975. Jokic ended his MVP campaign as the league leader in player efficiency rating, win shares, offensive win shares, box plus minus, offensive box plus minus, and value over replacement. You'd think this would have been met with nothing but praise, given we were witnessing a player who was drafted 41st overall during a Taco Bell commercial, to be exact, solidify himself as an all-time great draft steal in iconic fashion. I mean, damn, y'all. Jokic had become the lowest player selected in an NBA draft to be named MVP of all time. To be fair, Shaquille O'Neal would react to Joker winning the award, saying, because of you, the big man is back. Nick Wright didn't agree with that to say the very least, saying, quote, when you look at the league of MVPs over history, 
I say this with respect to Jokic. Historically speaking, he would be one of the worst we've had in 35 years. Chris Paul wouldn't be. Chris Paul is an all-time great player. But when you look at who's won the MVPs, oh, it's Giannis, it's Steph, it's LeBron, it's Durant, it's Rose pre-injury, and then Nikola Jokic. Oh, okay, that must have been a weird season, end quote. Instead of looking at the advanced stats in that season when he made that blasphemous take, which ranked Jokic in the advanced metrics as the same guy he was this season, Nick Wright would change his tune this past March, tweeting, where Nikola Jokic has ranked in the NBA amongst defensive players over the last three seasons, per defensive box plus minus, third, first, and first. If only Nick considered he was the third best player in the advanced defensive stats when he made that take about Jokic being the worst MVP in 35 years. Acting as if we forgot about that take about Nikola being the worst MVP, this was Nick Wright ahead of Game 6 against Phoenix. Are you officially a Joker guy? Listen, he's been outstanding. And I have not been everyone. I've not been a Jokic hater. I have you been kind of a, a skeptic. Worst talking head of them all in this discourse, however, has been Kendrick Perkins, who would almost single-handedly turn everyone against Jokic in Nikola's attempt to win a third straight MVP award. After that, in Perkins' fashion, he'd change his tune well after the award had been given out to Embiid. Before showing you how he changed his opinion, here's what Perkins would say on ESPN's first take, aka the most popular sports show in North America, which ultimately destroyed the MVP discourse. So I didn't know if I wanted to wait to bring this conversation on no mercy, or was it appropriate for first take? And damn it, I'm here so it's appropriate for first take. Uh, let me get us in outside of our comfort zone a little bit. When I come on here every single time and I ask, what is the criteria for the MVP and how the goalposts move? I'm asking these questions when it comes down to guys winning MVP since 1990, it's only three guys that won MVP that wasn't top 10 in scoring. Do you know who those three guys were? Steve Nash, Jokic, uh, Dirk Nowinski. No. Dirk Nowinski. <laughs> what do those guys have in common? That interview came in early March when the MVP debate was most prevalent, but just a few days ago, Kendrick would tweet out, I've been in denial about Jokic and the Nuggets, but I must say that they are legit. Carry the hell on. If that wasn't enough for you, then there's how the man who did win MVP this year in Joel Embiid made Jokic out to be. Now, I'm not denying Embiid had a strong case for the award this year, and he did score 47 points and drop a game-sealing jumper in Jokic's grill back in late January. Jokic only had 24 points in that one. However, Embiid would opt to sit out against Jokic in their second of two matchups, which could have played a massive role in the MVP debate, load managing a calf injury a few months after that initial 47 piece, this time in late March. But it was Embiid's comments about Nikola throwing shade at the two-time MVP, which were most eye-popping, just a few weeks before ducking that final matchup versus Denver in an interview with Shams, Joel said regarding not winning MVP in 2021 or 2022, the criteria does change. If we want to talk about the last three years since I've been in the running for it, the first year, it was that I didn't play enough games. Last year, I came back, I played enough games, I led the league in scoring, and obviously, Nikola deserved it and he won it. But then again, he won as a sixth seed in the West, and then this year, I'm leading the league in scoring, I'm doing all these things defensively, I should be making an all-defensive team too. I don't care. But every year it's something. And when you add analytics into it, which don't make sense, you can talk about analytics all you want. When you got some guys in the league, the eye test tells you that they're not good defensively, but analytics tell you they're the best defenders. That's when analytics don't make sense at all. I don't make the rules. I don't choose whatever criteria that they use. So it's really about whatever people's preferences are. Embiid was undoubtedly talking about Jokic there. The eye test suggests he's a below average defender due to his limited foot speed, which has been exploited in several playoff matchups against elite ball handlers to be fair. The metrics, however, have long considered Jokic an underrated defender. 538's Raptor, which measures the number of points a player contributes to team offense and team defense per 100 possessions, had Jokic as the NBA's fourth best defender this past season. 
but let's dismiss those advanced analytics for a second and go back to Embiid's point about Jokic being the number six seed and winning MVP. That six seed in 2022 looks a lot better when you take into account Denver was without Jamal Murray for the entire season and Michael Porter Jr. for all but nine games. It also looks pretty damn good when you consider a few of the starters that Jokic had to work with in that 21-22 season were now fringe NBA players in Will Barton and Monte Morris. The guard depth Joker had behind those guys featured Facundo Campazzo, who's out of the league, in addition to Austin Rivers and Bones Highland. Regardless, whether it was the recent reports from Mark Jackson, Chandler Parsons and Kendrick Perkins just changing their tune out of nowhere, like a Randy Orton RKO, or Jalen Rose somehow only just coming to the conclusion that the Joker's a top player in the game, I thought it was necessary to post this video on why the Nikola Jokic racism has gone too far.